Hello YouTube and welcome back to Be A Loser. In this video we explain why not all calories are created equal. A calorie is a calorie. This is something that I'm sure you've heard ad nauseum. It's the mantra of those who support caloric restriction or eat less, move more, or as we refer to it on this channel, caloric reduction as primary, or crap. And in the most literal sense, it's true. A calorie is a calorie. But that's not really the question we're asking now, is it? What we really want to know is, do all calories cause us to gain fat equally? Many people do legitimately believe that it is only the total caloric intake that matters in terms of weight gain. That it doesn't really matter what we eat, just how many calories we eat, and thus, a calorie is a calorie. This is actually a fairly new concept. As recently as the early 20th century, it was fairly common knowledge that obesity was caused by sweets and starchy foods. If you wanted to lose weight, you simply cut out those foods and you lost weight. Do you remember chatting with your granny about calorie counting? No. She, along with everyone else, believed that some foods would cause weight gain and others would not. That a calorie is not a calorie. So, who's right? Well, let's take an example, shall we? If you eat, say, 100 calories of ice cream or 100 calories of broccoli, do we assume this will have the same effect on weight gain? What if instead you had a half pound of ice cream and a half pound of broccoli? Would those have the same effect on weight? I mean, each one weighs half a pound. So shouldn't you gain half a pound? The thermodynamic pundits should certainly believe so. Remember, the first law of thermodynamics states that energy can neither be created nor destroyed in an isolated system. So by that logic, if we eat a half pound of food, any food, then we should gain a half a pound. After all, the weight can't just disappear, right? It may sound arbitrary, but that's the point. A calorie is a calorie is short-sighted about the complexity of the body, as is the first law of thermodynamics. So going back to the 100 calorie ice cream and broccoli, when you eat them, does your body measure the number of calories in them? No, it doesn't, because the metabolic effect of each of these foods is completely different. The broccoli will activate stretch receptors in your stomach, which signals satiety. And additionally, it will trigger the release of satiety hormones. The sugar in the ice cream will not stimulate any of these. What this means is that the sugar in the ice cream never really triggers your body to feel full. But the broccoli will. It's only the metabolic response to the individual food that determines how it's used by the body. And as we've seen before, the body can use the energy produced by those foods for many different purposes, including storing it as fat. Our body gains or loses fat based on hormonal signals from the brain. And what hormone controls this? Insulin. Increases and decreases in insulin levels are the main stimulus to weight gain. So foods that stimulate more insulin release are generally more fattening, a la ice cream. And foods that do not stimulate insulin release are generally not fattening, a la broccoli. So why do we obsess about calories? Why not weight or volume of food? Just as the body doesn't weigh how much we eat, nor does it measure the volume of what we eat, it doesn't count the calories of what we eat. So what we truly need instead of the calories in foods is the effect they have on insulin. And that was done for us by Marty Kendall at OptimizingNutrition.com. Check it out for yourself, but his research concludes that the least insulin stimulating diet is one that is low in carbohydrates, high in fiber, has moderate amounts of protein, and is high in natural fats. And we call this LCHF or low carb high fat. Check out our series on it for more information. 
But to be fair, the body doesn't really count carbs either. Carbs certainly have an impact on insulin, but some more than others. Highly processed carbs like sugar, cereal grains, and flour have a huge impact on insulin. But carbs that are minimal, minimally processed and high in fiber actually have very little effect on insulin levels. So remember, the body doesn't count calories, nor does it count carbs or fat or protein. All the body really cares about is insulin. So what we should really be concerned with instead of how many calories our food has is what is the insulin effect of those foods. And that will finish this video. We'll be back soon with another video in this series. Until then, I encourage you to like our videos and comment on them. And of course, subscribe to the channel to receive alerts about new videos. I also encourage you to follow us on Facebook, as well as visit our website, BeALoser.Today. As always, I would like to thank you for watching, and until next time, keep being a loser.